Hey, great to see you again. It's Toy House here, and today we're going to go through all 30 of the Paladin abilities. This is very much a beginner guide, but it's good to know, you know, if you're still deciding what class you want to play, you know, what abilities do you get access to if you play the Paladin? So we're going to go through all 30 of the Paladin's abilities, and we're going to start with Salvation. So Salvation is pretty incredible. It's an aura, and you can only have one active aura on at a time, I should tell you. And it's really great because if you just put one point into it, you get plus 60% to resist all. So that's every element, you get 60 resist. It's really strong, even if you put just one point into it. And it also plays into some synergies, uh, as in it helps other abilities by getting points into this one. And we'll get into that a little bit later. After Salvation, we also have Redemption. Redemption's pretty cool because it uh, basically redeems the souls of slain enemies. Basically, it takes their corpse and gives you and turns it into health and mana. This is useful for bosses or em enemies that basically revive. Um, so things like the Fallen Shaman is going to bring back the Fallen uh, or Carvers, things like that. Uh, and so using this is a great way to get rid of those corpses. You can see the same thing in Act 2. Uh, you know, the, the Revenants, they'll also, you know, resurrect the skeletons that die. If it's very difficult, you can find this aura to be helpful to get rid of some of those corpses. Okay, moving on to Meditation. Meditation is pretty straightforward. It's basically an aura that's just going to increase your mana recovery for you and your party. Um, it also... Um, you know, has some synergies with prayer, uh, you know, prayer uh, plus one life healed every two seconds. So yeah, uh, it's, it's a nice little aura there. Um, it's not crazy good, but again, synergies uh, can make it better. All right, let's talk about Vigor. So Vigor is kind of cool. It's an aura that you'd throw on if you're traveling and you don't, you're not fighting mobs on the way there. It's basically increases your stamina recovery rate, your maximum stamina and movement speed for you and your party. So stamina is basically what you use to run. You, when you run out of stamina, you can no longer run. So vigor is a great aura in order to allow you to run for a longer period of time and get to uh, different places faster. Vigor, again, is actually a um, synergy skill for Blessed Hammer. So um, this is a very, very common... Um, very popular build that paladins go using this as their active ability. So vigor uh, is very important uh, for that build. Moving on to resist lightning. Uh, this is definitely a very uh, important and powerful uh, ability for the holy shock paladin, for the dream paladin, for the tesladin, but also for the smiter. Uh, resist lightning is definitely something you're going to want to have for ubers. Uh, so resist lightning, and again, it's a synergy skill. That's why it's important. See, it synergizes with holy shock. Um, it's actually quite a quite a very good uh, skill, plus 52% resist lightning, and again, uh, synergies. So uh, a nice aura, again, for the paladin. Now, we're going to move on to prayer, or sorry, to cleansing. Cleansing is nice because this will reduce the length of time you and your party will remain poisoned or cursed. There are some nasty curses out there, and there's some very powerful poisons, so... Uh, cleansing is a nice aura to throw on if you have something like Amplify Damage on you, Decrepify, where you can't move and you can't attack very quickly. Cleansing can be an, an excellent way to get rid of that quicker. Uh, so it, you just throw it on. You might just put one point into it and, you know, um, you know, you could get plus skills to get it a little bit stronger. Moving on to Resist Cold. When active, this will decrease cold damage. So just like Resist Lightning, it's going to give you plus 52% cold. And again, it's going to synergize with things like Holy Freeze. So you can see uh, sort of a common trend there. Moving on to Defiance, this aura increases the defense rating of you and your party, gives you a plus 70% defense bonus. Personally, I think this is just a skill you put one point into to unlock Vigor. Um, I don't see people running around with Defiance on very often um, because you know there's things that are stronger than that, such as Holy Shield, uh, which will give you uh, a defense bonus as well as uh, an increased chance to block, successful blocking, plus 14% at rank one so defiance not too great but it is a prerequisite for other auras moving on to resist fire now this is actually one that i personally get pretty early on not necessarily because i want to resist fire but because there's a synergy with holy fire one of the first uh, offensive auras that i believe is very fun and very powerful i actually made a video all about the holy fire paladin uh, so resist fire is a nice synergy you can see here resist fire gives plus 18 percent fire damage per level which is quite a bit if you think about it all right, moving on to number 10, we have Prayer. Uh, when active, this aura slowly regenerates the life of you and your party. Again, this is not really an aura that I think is very powerful. Uh, again, it has some synergies here with cleansing as well as meditation, but I don't think it's super powerful. I don't see people throw it on very much. It's kind of one of those skills that you just put one point into. All right, moving on to Conviction. When active, this aura reduces the defenses 
the defenses and resistances of nearby enemies. This is a very powerful aura. This is one of my favorites. It's this kind of green glowing aura. This is used with the Dream Paladin or the Tesladin. Once you have the two Dream Rune Words, you can make this your active aura. Also, Infinity Rune Word uh, will give Conviction uh, rank 16, I believe. And so that, that's a very nice and popular uh, Merc weapon or Merc Rune Word. Merc Mercenary. Um, thir minus 30% to all resistances, minus 49% defense. It's very nice. You're going to see uh, enemies, you know, sometimes have this, um, putting this on you. It could be very dangerous. Um, you know, Ubers, things like that. Or just you could find them in hell mode or even nightmare. Um, these, uh, this is a very powerful aura, conviction aura. In order to get this, you got to go down this uh, right-hand side of the, uh, the aura tree for the paladin, the offensive aura tree. Uh, Next up, we have Fanaticism. When active, this aura increases the damage, attack speed, and attack rating for you and your party. So Fanaticism is very commonly used with the Zealot or the Zealer Paladin. This is going to increase your attack speed. You can see at rank 1, 14% increase. You get a 50% increase in, in damage uh, and 40% and attack. So Fanaticism, very powerful. You're going to see this very often with like uh, the Zealot-type Paladin. Okay, moving on to number... 13 we have sanctuary when active this aura damages the undead and knocks them back this is a very niche aura i don't see it used very often um it can be helpful you know if if you're just completely surrounded by undead and you want to throw it on but again this is not something i see people throw on very often i personally um you know i would just put one point into this if i was trying to get conviction um it also receives bonuses from cleansing which is kind of cool uh, but again, not not really an aura I see used too often. Next we have Holy Shock, one of my absolute favorite auras. In fact, probably my favorite aura of all, if not Conviction. Holy Shock, when active, the aura causes pulses of electricity to damage nearby enemies it, it to add uh, lightning damage to your attack. You have to be level 24 to get this. It adds 1 to 60 lightning damage to your attack, and then 1 to 10 lightning damage in an, a radius around you just automatically. I just think that's the coolest thing ever. The thing I don't really like about lightning is just the vast range of damage it can do. It can do as little as 1 damage addition to your attack and aura around you, up to 60 to your attack, and then up, up to 10. So you can see it's a huge range. That's typical for how lightning kind of works with... Uh, Diablo 2, it's just kind of, it's, it's, it's got a really, uh, really low minimum damage and a really high maximum damage. So I just find that kind of interesting. Um, but I love Holy Shock. I think it does tons of damage. Uh, it's the most powerful of the three sort of offensive auras that deal damage. Now, the next one I actually really, really like as well, Holy Freeze. When active, this aura freezes nearby monsters. It does 10 to 15 cold damage to your attack and also 2 to 3 nearby. Now you can see it's a dramatic decrease. You know, the, the maximum damage is only 30% of that of lightning. So you can see Holy Freeze is not really a damage dealing aura. It's more of a um, slowing aura. Enemies slowed 30%. Now this is very powerful. Uh, you know, I would say, you know, PvP, of course, player versus player. But also it's a very nice defensive option. The Mercenary in Act 2, uh, Nightmare you can actually purchase one that has holy freeze it's my top pick for that mercenary i love holy freeze i think it's a great defensive option if you need to run away you don't get surrounded easily you know in hell mode things can get very dicey very quickly so i think holy freeze is a fantastic option in order to keep yourself safe Okay, moving on to number 16, we have Concentration. This is another very important aura. When active, this aura increases the damage and decreases the chance that the attack will be interrupted for you and your party. So, chance uninterruptible, 20%, damage plus 60%. The reason this aura, however, is uh, very important is for some reason, I don't know why, this somehow increases the damage of Blessed Hammer. I've only, you know, I've only heard this, I haven't tested it myself because personally I don't like playing with Blessed Hammer, but I've heard that Concentration Aura is actually uh, the, uh, the aura for Blessed Hammer. You can see damage plus 60%. Um, but, you know, you'd think that this is only for physical attacks, but it actually improves Blessed Hammer. So this is the active aura for Blessed Hammer builds. Very interesting. Uh, so again, this is a very, uh, you're going to put a lot of points into this if you're going the Blessed Hammer build. So Concentration, very important. Moving on to Blessed Aim. When active, this aura increases the attack rating for you and your party. This is something that's very important for, uh, you know, if you're you know, being a zealot maybe or, you know, things like that. You want that attack rating. The aura itself, not very important, but attack rating can be important. Smite automatically will hit. However, other attacks, uh, you know, you have to make sure your attack rating is high enough to get hits off. So Tesladin needs that, or uh, Zealot, you're going to have to have that attack rating. 
Blessed Aim, however, is a synergy for Blessed Hammer. So you can see plus 14% magic damage per level. So you can start to see what uh, you know Blessed Hammer builds might be running uh, based off of those synergies. They'd probably be putting points into Blessed Aim. They'd probably be putting points into Vigor. And likewise, if you were running that Tesladin build, you know, you'd want to put that uh, those points into Resist Lightning and Salvation. You can see Salvation giving 4% lightning damage per level and resist lightning 12% lightning per damage per level. So just want to talk about some of these synergies. I just realized I didn't talk about them before. Resist cold salvation also helps holy freeze. So you can see if you get salvation, you're going to help holy shock, holy freeze, and holy fire um, accordingly. So we just finished blessed aim. Let's talk a little bit about thorns. So this is a aura you get at level 6. It returns 250% damage. Um, it's pretty strong. I honestly don't really get it. It's only a prerequisite if you're trying to get conviction. Um, so you could, you know, get thorns, uh, you know, just to get that. But otherwise, I don't think thorns is too crazy. I mean, unless you're trying to make like a meme build <laughs> or something. Uh, it's not necessarily meta. All right, number 19, we have Holy Fire. Holy Fire is, again, one of my favorites. It's a great beginner paladin aura. It's going to serve you very well uh, if you do the build right, getting that resist fire beforehand. It's very powerful, just AoE damage, plays very similar to the Dream Paladin early on, just killing stuff by walking around them. A lot of fun. It also adds fire damage to your attack, of course, uh, so don't forget that. So you, of course, want to attack very quickly when you have these types of auras going on. And now number 20, we have Might. This is a perfect level 1 or level 2 ability. It's a great active aura until you can get Holy Fire early on. This gives you plus 40% damage. I mean, that's a huge number, plus 40%. So Might, fantastic aura, great first aura. Getting this at level 1 or 2 right away is a great idea. Okay, let's move on to number 21. We have Fist of the Heavens. This is one of the, in fact, the best PvP ability. Fist of the Heaven, lightning strikes your target as holy bolts seek out nearby enemies. So, you know, you can see holy bolt damage 40 to 50, lightning damage 150 to 200. It's very powerful. It receives bonuses from holy bolt and holy shock. So you can see here, there's synergy there with holy shock. And then, of course, holy bolt, which is up here. Um, so Fist of the Heavens, very, very, uh, or acronym is F-O-T-H, uh, of course, uh, lots of acronyms in D2. It's really a PvP-oriented ability. Moving on to number 22, we have Holy Shield. This is used in almost every Paladin build I can think of. This enhances your shield with Divine Power, granting plus 25% defense, plus 14% uh, successful blocking. It receives bonuses from Defiance. Uh, so this is this is pretty good. Um, you definitely want to have this on pretty much all the time. Um, you know, depending on how much block chance you have, you have to put more points into it or more, get more dexterity. The max block chance is 75%. So, you know, depending on what your block is, you might want to put more or less points, but typically you're going to put at least one point into Holy Shield. It's a really powerful ability. Moving on to conversion, this is not an ability I've seen used, nor have I used myself personally. It converts a monster to fight against other, you know, foul demons and beasts, so chance to convert is 7%. Um, pretty low, so you can see it's not even really good with even one point in it. However, it is a prerequisite for Fist of the Heavens, so you might just see people put one point into it. Not much to say there. Number 24, we have Blessed Hammer. Lots to say here, but I already did kind of cover it as I was covering other abilities. This summons an ethereal hammer that spirals outwards, damaging enemies it hits 150% uh, damage to undead. So that's a lot of extra damage. Magic damage is 12 to 16. What's cool about Blessed Hammer is that it's not like, it's not cold, it's not lightning, it's not fire, it's not, you know... Um, any of the elements, not poison. So Blessed Hammer is very popular for that reason, is that things aren't going to be immune to it, um, as far as I know, I'm pretty sure. So Blessed Hammer, very, very popular build, very, very strong build. Uh, one of the best builds you can possibly go in Diablo 2 is the Blessed Hammer build. So um, very powerful, of course. It's not perfect. There are times when the Blessed Hammer is just not equipped, like, you know, the, the Maggot Lair is just filled with tunnels and, and the blessed hammer is not really suited for that type of narrow environment but it's a very popular build and very powerful moving on to vengeance this is uh, an ability i've seen used before uh, i've used it a little bit it's kind of cool um, as you can see a lot of synergy bonus for, bonuses from resist fire cold lightning as well as salvation um, and and basically it adds um, fire, lightning, and cold damage to each successful attack. So you can see it's going to give you extra damage in, t in the form of 
cold and fire and lightning um, and gets all those bonuses from those resists. So it's kind of nice if you run into monsters that are immune to a specific element, you can switch over to vengeance and try to hit them with some of your other elements. Moving on to number 26, we have Charge. This is actually a very nice ability. This is um, sort of the Paladin's way to get around, whereas Sorceress has Teleport, Paladin has Charge, charges into battle and attack an enemy. Uh, I like to put one point into this just so that I can get around a little bit quicker. You can charge nothing, so you, and it actually makes your character move quite fast. Uh, it costs only nine mana, so you can really get around pretty easily. Of course, you know if you're using it for a long time or you get stuck on something, it's going to drain your mana pretty fast. Um, but a very nice uh, ability to get, and of course, you're going to get it on your way anyways to Holy Shield, so it's pretty cool. Moving on to number 27, Zeal. This is one of my favorite abilities as well. It allows you to attack multiple adjacent enemies with a single attack. This is uh, nice because, you know, if you're, there's tons of enemies around you or if you're just trying to pound down a single boss, this allows you to attack in succession very quickly. The first level gets two hits, and if you put four points into it, you max out at five hits. and also gives you an attack bonus. It gains bonuses from Sacrifice, which we'll get to. It's this one up here. But um, it's very nice, and you'll typically see, see it used with the Zealot. We'll see Zeal, so you can see it's a namesake. Um, you can also see it used with Dream Paladin, with the, um, you know, occasionally with, with the Smiter if there's like a ton of enemies around, but Smite is really the main ability of the Smiter. Um, but, you know, Holy Fire Paladin, Holy Shock Paladin, Zealot, all are going to use the Zeal ability as their primary attacking ability. Moving on to number 28, we only have three left. We have Holy Bolt. This is an ability that typically is just used as a prerequisite because this only damages undead enemies or heals allies. I have not seen this used uh, very frequently. Personally, I don't use it very frequently. It's fun uh, to use, you know, just f for fun. But other than that, it's, it's not too crazy. I do like the artwork. I do think it's pretty cool. Does 8 to 16 magic, heals 1 to 6. It's kind of cool. Looks cool. Uh, you've seen the artwork before, I'm sure. It's like a, it makes a nice vomp, vomp song, <laughs> sound. <laughs> so, uh, cool ability. Uh, number 29, we have Smite, the main ability of the Smiter Paladin. Temporarily stun your enemy by bashing it with your shield. Damage plus 15%. So you have to, you can't really go Smiter until you're kind of high level. It's something you respect to because Smite is not super powerful. The best thing about it is that it basically always hits. That's that's what's really great. And it's it's a pretty fast attack too. So, I mean, you have to, of course, get the right auras and whatnot to, to increase your attack. But, um, you know, it the, the guaranteed hit is really where it's at with Smite. And it's, it's one of the best Paladin builds ever. Probably the best Paladin build for going through uh, absolute end game, end game content, the Pandemonium event, Ubers, Diablo clone, things like that. Smite, Smite Paladin, super strong. And finally, our last ability, we have Sacrifice. This increases the accuracy and damage at the cost of life. So 8% damage to self, first level, and it will add 20 attack rating and a 180% damage. So this will probably be the first skill you put points into. Just get Sacrifice right off the bat, and that's going to be your primary attacking ability. Then you'll get Might as your primary aura, and there you go. You're, you're ready to go as a level 3 Paladin. You've got your Sacrifice and your Might, and you're just owning stuff super quickly. Um, sacrifice again is going to give some bonuses to um, zeal uh, which is nice uh, but typically um, I don't see many builds do that unless maybe if you're a zealot you might do it but the builds that I'm familiar with like holy shock tesla and um, holy fire paladin I don't see it but it's a it's a great beginner ability and with that we've gone through all 30 paladin abilities hopefully this gives you a better idea if you're kind of on the fence should i roll paladin what does paladin have to offer now you have a better idea of all the skills that they have some of the different builds we talked about some of the more popular ones i'll put some links down in the description for you guys to go check out some different guides on paladin um you know whether that's the holy shock whether that's holy fire or blessed hammer paladin zealot smite i'll throw it all in the description you can enjoy get a better idea of different builds and how Paladin plays. But I hope this was helpful. If it was, don't forget to give the video a like. And if you want more Diablo 2 resurrected content, don't forget to subscribe. My name is Toyhouse, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.